So now you will actually be running a MapReduce application on YAN. I'll be showing you how to do that. So everything is uh, done by the resource uh, availability on that particular node. <clears throat> so when we talk about a MapReduce job, there is a job submission. Remember yesterday we did uh, Hadoop jar, the name of the jar, that's a job submission. There would be a job initializing that would happen. The individual task would be assigned on every node. The memory would be assigned. There would be a status update that was communication call with application master. And there would be a failure recovery that will happen. If one of the nodes, wherever the map runs fails, it will automatically be started on another node, wherever the data is. Okay? Cool. So here we are going to talk about the execution of a MapReduce flow. One, you have got a client JVM, client is somebody who is outside the cluster. He would submit a job. So that is point number one. But how does he submit a job? He will say Hadoop jar, the name of the jar file, and he would press enter. That is the way how a job is submitted. When the job is submitted, it would go down to the management node or the master node. That is the resource manager to get the new application ID. Remember, the job ID comes in. Okay. <clears throat> As a part of step number three, he would copy the job resources. Remember we said moving the code to the data. The code has to go to the data, right? So it will copy the job resources to HDFS in step number three, and then it will submit the code to the resource manager. So these are the first four steps. There are totally 12 steps. So guys, I hope you are clear on the first four steps. Whenever you say Hadoop jar, the name of the jar file, the name of the application and press enter, a job gets executed which will go down to the management node for the job ID. The job gets copied down to the uh, HDFS because only HDFS will know which nodes have the data and then the job gets submitted to the resource manager. Okay? Let's get down to the next slide. So now, step number five, the resource manager will ensure that uh, you start the uh, application master container. Okay, so it will tell the node manager to create the container on the data node itself. So that is step number five. It will start the application manager container by telling the node manager to create the container. Okay, so once that is done, Okay, step number six, it will uh, tell the uh, node manager to, okay, that, uh, the, the arrow should have been the other, other way around. Okay, I think uh, the, the create container arrow is what is this, node manager telling to create the container. And then step number seven, the application master will get, talk to the HDFS and will know <coughs> the input splits wherever the data is right and it will tell the node manager to actually start the uh, container for the map and the radius so that is taken care of by the app master so that is what is the start container uh, arrow that is showing plus for any resources he will have to talk to the resource manager for uh, getting the data and then you will see the node manager will actually start the container, uh, that is step number 10, but before step number 10, step number 9 is uh, the container would be started by the node manager. It will create that container on step number 10. The map reduce task will actually go ahead and get the resources from the HDFS and the execution would happen. These are the 12 steps that we have over here. <clears throat> what is submit application? Submit application is the command that you wrote, Hadoop jar, the name of the jar file. Okay, so all of these things happen when you run that particular command. So submit application means move that particular code or register that application to the resource manager. First, you ask, say that you want to run a job, you will get the application ID, you copy the resources, you submit the application to the resource manager. Those are the first four steps. Okay, good. <clears throat> Velan said there are two start containers. Are they different? They are the same? No, they are different. The first start container is for the node manager to start the application master container who is going to talk about the life cycle. And the second start container, create container, is uh, for the node manager to start the actual container where the map and the reduce are going to start. 
So let me go up a little bit. I'll show you one slide before we had seen this. See over here, friends. <clears throat> there are three containers here, right? So there's a container for the application master. Then there is a container for the map and the reduce task, right? So uh, the uh, node manager will create the container for the application master and the application master will tell uh, the node manager to actually start the container for the map and the reduce. So those are the two separate steps that we have, friends. Let me go down to the actual slide now so that this becomes clear for you. Step number, uh, 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 this thing is uh, six is node manager starting the container, there is application master, okay? So think of this arrow that you see over here, friends, okay? This arrow that you see what is highlighted that goes from the application master to the node manager, it should actually be the other way around, okay? And then uh, the application master will, in the step number seven, will get the input splits. He will ask the resource manager in step number eight. And step number nine, he will tell the node manager to start the container. And the node manager will start the container. That is your step number 10. The 11th, the map reduce task will get the resources from HDFS and the actual execution happens in the container. This is a complete end-to-end -end flow, guys. Okay, the client uh, request a job, step number one, I'm repeating the whole thing once again. It will talk to the name node for getting the job ID. The job ID will come back to the client. Client in step number three will copy the XML file and the jar file to HDFS. Then it will submit that application, whatever is needed, to the resource manager so that there will be a queue. So remember, only when you submit application will the capacity scheduler comes in over here, right? <clears throat> then step number five, the resource manager will tell, okay, I have to start with the application master for that job. So it will tell the node manager to create the application master on one of the nodes. Step number seven, the application master will get the input split from the HDFS. Okay, then he would know which all nodes the data is. It will tell the node manager on that machine, okay, to start with the container. So that is what is uh, step number nine. It will also talk to the resource manager in step number eight to get the resources. <clears throat> the node manager on different machines will start the map and the reduce task. That is step number 10. Uh, each task will talk to HDFS to get the job resources, step number 11, and finally the map and the reduce gets executed. So remember the uh, application master is one container, separate JVM, and the map and the reduce is another JVM. So there are, three, there are three slides, right? Let me go up. See the first slide is basically the blue arrow. The second slide is basically the orange one, and the third slide is basically the red one. Okay? That's all. That's the reason why we did it. Good? So that was about our complete end-to-end -end execution. So if you look at the screen over here, you have got the resource manager. There are two parts, right? I told you applications manager and scheduler. The resource manager uh, would, uh, for uh, the first job, uh, create a container for the application master. Application master will tell the node manager on node, uh, uh, this, I don't know what, let's call it a six. Let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, top down. So it will, it will, the, the, the application master on node three will tell the node manager on node four to start with the container and also the container for, uh, in node number five because that's where the map task or the reduce task will be happening. Similarly, for the second job, it is there on my application master is on my node number uh, six, eight, and it will tell on node number four, node number uh, 10, and node number 12 to start with the containers. So this is the complete summary of the execution steps, okay? So, sequences, client submits an application to the resource manager, okay, then the resource manager allocates a container to start the application master, clear guys, okay, then the application master registers with the resource manager because he will have to talk to the resource manager for the resources, 
okay then the application master ask containers from the resource manager why because i know where the data is going to be right then it will tell the node manager to launch the containers okay then the application code is executed in a container okay then comes the status part of it client company contacts the application master to monitor the application status guys i hope this makes it very clear guys so this is the summary of your complete map reduce workflow and then once it's done application master unregisters with the resource manager because i have finished with the job